one of the biggest setbacks in the trading industry is uh, terminology. When traders see uh, a new term that they don't know or don't understand, yet, yet actually they could be knowing how to use those terms in a simpler way. Uh, they keep forcing themselves to want to learn that, thinking that's the new holy grail that could help them in their trading. That's what is making people take long to become consistent or, or realize actually a method that does work for them. Hello everyone, this is Paul from the APN Academy. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about breakup blocks. I will explain why I've made that statement before I started this video, right? So if you're new to this channel, uh, my name is Paul once again. And if you've just come across for the first time, uh, please do subscribe because we do uh, release a video weekly, a video or two videos weekly to help your trading journey, right? So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about breakup blocks. In the previous video, we spoke about how one could actually identify order blocks. Now, after learning how to identify order blocks, we do have other two types of blocks that you need to understand. And one of them is the breakup blocks, which we are starting with today. Now, what are we going to be studying in today's uh, video? We're going to be covering what uh, breaker blocks are. We're going to be studying about the types of breaker blocks and actually how you can identify them. Then we shall be looking at how we can use them. Now, as usual, if you've been uh, following all our videos that we have been posting, you know that we start with theory so that we make you do understand in detail before we can get, into, get onto the chat. So that when we go to the chat, you clearly understand uh, what we are trying to show you, right? So without wasting time, let's just start right away, right? So what are these uh, breaker blocks? Now, remember last time we spoke about uh, order blocks and we said that um, a bullish order block is that last uh, bear candle before the move starts. And we want that last order block to break at this structure so that the market can come back to it. And also we mentioned that sometimes the market does not come back exactly to this because of certain reasons that we mentioned. If you've not watched that video, I'm just going to attach it in the description so that you can watch it. Now. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be studying about the breaker block. It's one of the order blocks that people need to be using in case you're using order blocks. But why did I make that statement that I started with is if you were to look at these order blocks or after studying about these order blocks, you realize actually these are just M's and W's. And if you were to remember the rules of M's and W's that we did cover in the video of M's and W's, you realize that you actually don't need to understand all these terms. Are we together? You just need to follow the the few principles that you know, you don't need to know much when you're doing trading, when you're a trader. When you keep focusing on knowing much, knowing this and that, it makes your journey very long. Do not prolong your journey, guys, right? So just let's first define uh, what the breaker block is. A breaker block uh, is found at the last turning point. It can be either a higher low or a lower high that attempts to create either a new higher high or a, a lower low, a new lower low but it fails to hold and it is broken. What do I mean by that? If the market is going up, creating a high, creating a low, and then attempts this higher high here, and then breaks below, right? It breaks this standing point here. Instead of retesting this higher high, breaks it, and also breaks this standing point here. This is what we are calling a breakup block. There's a, a block here that, this is an order block that gave us, gave us this push to create a higher high. That's what we are defining it as. It give, attempts to give us this higher high, but when it comes to retest, does not hold, right? It instead just breaks. So alternatively, we can say that a breaker block is actually a failed order block, an order block that failed to hold price. Are we together? Let me just repeat that. When the market is going higher high, higher low, higher high, it creates for us here, uh, it does create for us here uh, an order block here that actually, uh, is supposed to hold price, right? Because we expect the price will come back here before pushing up. Are we together? But if the market, if this order block here fails to hold price here and price goes through, that's what we are calling a breaker block. Actually, from the name even, it can just, it, it can be easy for you to, to, to define it, a breaker block. It has been broken. That order block is supposed to hold price has been broken. Are we together? So as illustrated here, we have the, the one that is create, attempting to create a higher high, but it failed and then broke down. Then we have one that was attempting to create a new lower low, but failed to hold and then it was broken. So that's how we define breakup blocks, right? So now let's, let's, let's continue. Let's continue. 
Now, let's look at the types of breakup blocks that we do have. Of course, in the markets, we are in for two things, either buying or selling. So meaning we're going to be having the bearish and the bullish. So from the definition, the bearish one is found at the last turning point that attempts to create a new higher high, but fails to hold and is broken. Now, just like from a name, a bearish one, we're looking at create, uh, looking for sales, right? So when the market creates this high, creates a higher low, creates a higher high. This higher high, this order block here is supposed to hold it before it, before price pushes up. But the moment it fails to hold price and it is broken, this becomes your, the bearish one. Because why are we calling it bearish? Because at this point here, when the market retests, we expect to be looking for bearish moves. Or we start, we start looking for sell moves, right? That's why we're saying that it's, it's sometimes can be called as a failed order block in a simple terms. In case this long definition is uh, uh, hard for you, you can just say that a breaker block is a failed order block in whatever direction you are in. So a, a bearish order, uh, breaker, we say that it's one of the last turning point that attempts to create a higher high. You can clearly see here, the market created a high, then attempted, created a higher high, attempted it, but for this to hold as a higher high, uh, it must come and react here and then it, it keeps moving that direction. The moment it fails to hold price, this, this uh, order block fails to hold price, this will become a breaker block. Are we together? But we're going to be looking at what will actually qualify this as a breaker block. It then simply means that once it is broken, the market is going to come retest and continues down. We're going to be looking at the conditions, right? Now, let's continue to the next one, which is the bullish one. The bullish one is just the opposite of the is just the opposite of the bearish one. This one is found at the last turning point that attempts to create a new lower low but fails to hold and is broken. In simple terms, also it's just a failed order block. Remember, when the market is pushing down, we are creating lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Now we have order blocks that are being uh, uh, created here. We have order blocks that are created at every lower high that is supposed to push a price down. Right? We have Order blocks, we have order blocks that are holding there. Now, the moment it fails to hold the price and it is broken, let's say the market creates a low, creates a lower high, creates a lower low. Now, we have an order block here that is supposed to hold price. The moment it fails to hold price to push it down like this to create a new lower low, the moment it fails to do that, to do that and you said it is broken above, we say that the market has, this order block here has become a, a breaker block because it has been broken right now there's a very much similarity actually it's the same thing right personally i don't like making trading complicated if you look at the video that we we talked about m's and w's actually i'm going to attach the uh, link in the description if you look at the types of w's that we talked about we have we had the w that is a double bottom we had the w that creates uh, a higher low and we had the w that creates a lower low right if you look at this it's simply this same thing that we are speaking about here but because we do like uh, terms, sometimes, let me even say sometimes complicated terms, right? We tend not to focus on the simple terms. And we think that uh, the trading terminologies or trading methods that have strong terms are actually things that work. But those things are actually de developed on these simple ones. Anyone can come up with a name. Even you, once you understand this thing, you can just name it anything you want. That's how you see people have come up with different names of strategies and all that, but all of them evolve around turning points. Turning points are very important that even price actually price action actually bases on turning points. Turning points create everything that you're trading in the market, right? Even indicators are built around turning points. Even those types of graphs, bar charts, candlestick charts, line charts, they're all built around turning points, right? So do not focus on so on strong terms and all that right having understood what a breaker block is and the different types the two types that we do have on it now let's look at how you can the steps actually can take to use this theoretically and we can go on the chat and see how we can implement what we have just studied and how we can actually identify it on the charts because knowing theoretically something is different from knowing it actually practically and trading is a practical thing because you are going to be doing it time and time. So it's something you need to know how to do yourself on the chart. So uh, let's just see the steps, how you need to. The first thing you have to do is you need to identify the direction of the market for any type of, or any method of trading that you're doing, guys. This is just an advice from me to you. 
make sure you, you first identify the direction. After identifying the direction, identify the structure that you want to trade. What do I mean by direction? For example, we said when you're choosing time frames, you need to have three to four time frames that you're choosing from one. You need to have a time frame for analysis. Now, in analysis is where we get direction and structure. Then two, you need to have an, a time frame for entry. Then you need to have a time frame for uh, you need to have a time frame for refining your entries, right? So all these the, in the and analysis were getting direction and the structure to trade. Then after identifying the structure to trade. The structure by structure trade down, uh, you can identify that are you trading higher highs? Are you a trend a trend trader? So are you trading this retracement to this point or you're trading the continuation? You need to identify, or oh, are you a trader who is trading an M? Are you trading it uh, from down here to retest the neckline? Or are you a trader who is waiting for a continuation from the neckline to push down? So you need to first identify the structure you're trading. Or are you a trader who is trading an impulsive move? Are you trading the retracement to the FIB level? Or are you trading the continuation? So it's very important to identify direction and identify structure you're trading. Most of you don't know the structure you're trading, whether you're using order blocks, whether you're using in what type of indicator, which we don't advise actually. It's better you now trade price action, like the videos we're posting here. If you watch them, your price action game will really go to the next level. Then identify a break and wait for price to return to it. Here I mean, you must identify a breaker because we're learning, we're talking of how to identify, uh, how to trade using breaker blocks. For example, if I'm trading using, uh, I'm, I'm a, a, a trend continuation trader. For example, the market created this higher high, created this higher low, then created the high. Now there's an order block that pushed the, the price up from here, right? Now, if the market breaks it, now one of the points or the rules that I did tell you guys that uh, I told you on the previous slides that we're going to talk about the rules is, the distance between uh, this breaker block, the block that has been broken, should at least be significant. Sometimes we identify short distances that don't give us a proper risk to reward ratio. The distance at least should be good so that there's a risk to reward ratio. It can even give you room to trade the retracement to this. Make sure you identify, what, no matter the type of, of method you're using, not, not only for breaker blocks or other blocks, no matter what uh, strategy in quotes you're using, make sure there is, the risk to reward ratio is usually worth it. Most of the traders are risking more than actually they're supposed to make from a trade. That is very dangerous. That's a deadly game. That's not how trading is done, guys, right? So identify what type of trading you're doing. That is one I've given you. For ex another example is, let me just clear this. If there's an impulsive move, right? There is uh, an order block that gave us this impulsive move, right? Right, it gives you this impulsive move. We shall expect now from an impulsive move, most traders be expecting the price to come back. But after an impulsive move, we have to apply the fib levels, right? So you have to apply your fib and check if those fib levels are being taken out, right? So you have to first identify the structure that you're trading, right? So if you don't know the structure you're trading, it's going to cost you. You need to know my trading the impulsive move. If I have an impulsive move, I know that this order block most times is not going to be retested or I have to wait for it to be broken so it becomes an, a breaker block. Are we together? If this is my impulsive move, if this is my impulsive move and there is a, an order block that gave me that impulsive move. Sometimes it will come and retest, but most times it will not. It will stop at the FIB levels. We have a whole video on the FIB. You can just scroll through one of our, vid uh, scroll through our videos and you check for it, right? Most times will not come and do this, but sometimes it will do. Now, if this is taken out, then you know that I'm trading, I'm waiting for a retracement, right? Remember the NB, we have just said that this distance, the breaker block being crossed or being broken, it needs to be a significant distance so that you can even trade a retracement or it's giving you a proper risk to rad ratio so that when, when you're taking your trade, the risk is minimal, right? So after identifying direction structure and identify your breaker block, here I meant breaker block, and wait for price to return to it. For example, if the price, if this breaker block was broken, right? If this breaker block was broken, let's say I'm trading an M, right? This is an M actually, right? The price created this high, attempted the higher high, then came and broke this. So I need a significant distance here. Then I want the price to return here before I can uh, take my sell trade. Are we together? So this is how you trade it. And you have to wait for 
a change of trend and confirmation in this area here. Are we together? Make sure when price returns to this order block, wait for a change of momentum, wait for a loss of momentum, wait for a change of trend. Do not just take trades. The reason why you people are failing on order blocks or breaker blocks or mitigation blocks, whatever you're trading, is because when price just reaches this area, uh, you will hear people saying that trade at the tip of the week, trade using the board of the week, don't smanny uh, three quarters of the body, half of the body. Do not trade like that. You will lose money, right? So having looked at these steps, identifying direction, uh, structure to trade, and then where you want to take the trade from. Are you trading a retracement or you're trading a continuation? Then wait for a change of trend and confirmation, right? So now let's try to go to the charts and I show you exactly how you can apply these things. Okay, so I am on my chart and I'm using V75 chart as, as, a, as an example today. V75 is a synthetic index and if you don't have an account to trade synthetic indices, they operate 24 seven, meaning even on weekends, you can trade even public holidays and fundamentals do not affect them. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Get yourself a demo account and practice Practice so that you can have a diversified portfolio trade, forex trade, uh, synthetic indices. You can also create for stocks and all that. So let's just start without wasting time. So we say that we are looking for situations whereby the market creates a high, higher low, creates attempts a high, and then breaks below. Or the market creates a low, a uh, lower high, a low, and then it breaks. So we're interested in these uh, areas here. We're interested in these areas here these areas these are what we are interested in the breaker blocks right so let's try to identify them on the charts now starting from here we're doing from here up to down here what happened is the market created for us a high higher low high equal lows high uh higher low then higher high now here there are very many structures that someone would consider i would consider either this high because these are equal lows so you can consider this high and this higher low, and then this high, or you can consider these two, this, this high here and this one here, this one and this one. So you can use any that you wish. Now, personally, I'm interested in using this small one here, right? So um, let's just take, we're going to show this, we're going to use this, sorry, higher high, a new high attempted high, which candle gave us that attempted high? It was this one here. So if you look just what the market did is it came back into this area here. Of course, why did the market overlay here? Because we had this impulse, retracement impulse. This is a Fibonacci retracement tool. If you draw your Fib tool, you will see exactly it stopped in our Fib tool and then finished this move. Still within here, and then it gave us a push down, right? So that is one that we have identified. Then what about the second one? The second one that you can identify is also down. Uh, we can use, um, we can also use this one here. The market created a high, then higher high, right? So we are looking for the last can, red candle. You can use, some people would use this one here, right? And or some people would use this full body candle, depending on what you'd like to use. It's still in the same area. So personally, I'm going to use this last red candle because it's done which uh, gave us the momentum push up. This one did not give us a momentum because the next buy candles did not take it out. But this red candle is which gave us the high. So I'm going to consider this. And what happened? The market broke below and then retested, are we together? And you can take your sale. So this is how you identify uh, breaker blocks. But now this is uh, uh, for, we're only looking for sales. What about for, uh, for buys, right? Okay, we have been looking at uh, sell ones. Now here is a buy one. The market created this low and created a, low, a lower low here. So meaning we're looking at the last uh, bullish candle that gave us the push down. So when we extend like this, you can clearly see that this is exactly where the market came to and it bounced from here, right? So this is how you identify uh, breaker blocks, both bearish and bullish, right? If they are so easy, just look for those places where the market attempted the lower low or attempted the higher high, but did not hold and instead broke. In other words, also you can just look for Ws or Ms with, uh, you can look for an M with a higher high, then breaks below. You just wait for a retest of the neckline or you wait for a W with a low alone then you wait for a retest here. It's the same thing. I love my trading very simple. So I'll just take these things at M's and W's with lower lows or with a higher high. Then I wait for a retest of the neckline. It's just simply the same thing, right? So that is it for, for this video. 
and if you found vid, uh, value in this video please you can click that like button and if it's your first time watching one of our videos please do subscribe because it helps many people come across our videos have a good day